Hello everyone. Welcome to part two of the online graduate library research workshop. And this is entitled from research question to search strategy. What I'm going to discuss in the next series of videos will be, first of all, the research question, but more specifically, how you can use terms in your research question to formulate search strategies how you can create your own research thesaurus or controlled vocabulary, how you can then develop a search strategy, and lastly, how you can document what you've done. So with respect to research questions, I won't spend too much time on this because I know that you'll probably have discussions with professors Emort and Scott in your classes, as well as some faculty speakers that will be coming and talking about research questions from a professional faculty point of view. My, my interest is really how you can take research questions and mine them for very specific terms that will be critical for your own research. Now, with respect to research questions and how you can generate keywords from them, I'm gonna start with a quote and I'm gonna read it because it's so important. You have to be systematic about generating keywords and creative at the same time. Not an easy task. In fact, searching the literature involves a surprisingly sophisticated set of thought processes that take a long time to learn. This is from Dr. Inger Muburn, who is an associate professor at the Australian National University currently and is the author of this. This is found in a blog called The Thesis Whisperer, and this particular article is called How to Become a Literature Searching Ninja. And when I saw it a number of years ago, I thought this is really illustrative of the issue when it comes to formulating search strategies that a lot of people miss out on. And I wish I could replicate it and put it in all graduate handbooks and even undergraduate handbooks because so many times people come to search or library research and think that it's essentially typing words into a search engine like Google and then looking at the results. It, it isn't. It takes a surprisingly sophisticated set of thought processes that take a long time to learn. So just to reiterate that again, I thought that this article was really interesting because it looked at it from a real world researcher's perspective and it actually had an example how somebody did it in, in real life. So Dr. Muburn was on a research trip at some point to Indonesia and her research question that she had come up with was, to what extent do safety concerns affect women's transportation choices in large cities like Jakarta? And I think while she was there, she started to formulate a series of questions that were related as well. So this is very important. Not only do you have one research question, but you can you come up with a number of different questions that may be related. You may be interested in answering, doing some research on and answering, or maybe not. Maybe you just have one main question. So what she did was she took that first question, to what extent do safety concerns affect women's transportation choices, and drew a little bit of a mind map. There are a number of ways you can do this. There's a lot of online tools for this that have been developed in the in the last few years. So I won't I won't get into those. They're fairly easy to find on the web. She started to develop some related questions. One was how do women make choices about commuting in other large cities? Another one was, how do we, women react to stories about violence in the media? And then, what makes women feel unsafe or safe in public places? Those were all related questions that she thought might be useful to look at in her research. And then what she did was taking one of those and expanding her mind map in a sense. The question, how do women make choices about commuting in other large cities? She realized that she'd have to delve into a bunch of different literatures on things like commuting in large cities to answer that question, as well as women and transportation 
and additionally commuting in small cities. Now for our purposes, this is where it starts to get important to think about terms. And I'll just take one term here, the term women. It's important to think about related terms at this point. And I'll get into the nitty gritty of how this affects your individual searches in databases in a subsequent video. But let's just say that specialized research databases work best when you think in terms of concepts rather than questions. I'll reiterate this again. You don't want to type in a research question. You want to actually think about concepts as you're doing, as you're putting together your research string in the database. So you want to think about related terms, women, females, maybe girls. And this is where you have to ask some questions. What age group are you interested in? For example, I don't know if girls is really used in the research literature. It might be, it might not be. We'll leave that as, a, as an open question. You might want to think about particular age ranges. And so you might even say, well, I'm interested more in adolescent females, adolescent women. And what age group would that be? Would it be 13 to 19 or 13 to 15 or 16? I don't know. Uh, you would also then need to go in to your particular literature and see how it's defined. But if you missed one of these terms, you might miss some articles, perhaps, that would incorporate a term such as females or women. And a classic case is um, the term capital punishment versus the term death penalty. If you didn't have one of those terms, you might miss a whole bunch of literature that really focused in on that. And, you know, these days with the advent of electronic information and digitization of full text articles, it may not be as much of an issue. However, the more terms you can get in your search, the larger the chance of retrieving good, precise results becomes. Now let's move on to the discussion from terminology to actually creating your own research thesaurus or controlled vocabulary. This is also known as an index, a thesaurus, a list of keywords or subject headings. They're all related. They mean slightly different things. An index is of course something that you find at the back of a book or it can actually be a field in a database that has terms that are indexed. A thesaurus is another specific thing that compiles related terms. Keywords are really just terms that are important but don't necessarily have fixed definitions and subject headings are taken from, in the library world, the university catalog, library catalog uses the Library of Congress subject headings, but they're specific concepts, terms that have been added in the back end to help bring you into very a very narrow area of research. Now, for your research controlled vocabulary, I'm pulling this from a researcher named Andrew Abbott. I'm just going to hold up a book here called Digital Paper, a manual for researching and writing with library and internet materials. This is a really fascinating book. I'm going to include a link on my resource page that will be ma made available to you later. Andrew Abbott is a sociologist at the University of Chicago, and what he's done in this book is look at the research process from an experienced researcher's point of view. So again, this is not a librarian telling you that you should do this. This is somebody who's actually doing research at a faculty level. And he's got a fascinating chapter in here called A Library Ethnography. If you're interested in this kind of area, and I, I realize not a lot, uh, there's probably not a lot of people that are, but he goes through the process, his research process, that eventually led to a chapter in a scholarly book, in an edited collection. And it was quite amazing the, the work that he went through and how he actually got to do his fulsome literature review for his particular chapter. And he has said, it's really important for you to identify the concepts in your research, what they are, and then create your own definitions for them. So in the case of women, I mean, it might be a little bit, a little bit too general, but you might say for women, I understand that as being, you know, and maybe you put in your age group or for very specialized terminology in the sciences, that would be very helpful for you to say by this term, I mean this, and you are creating your own concepts. And that helps you to, when you're searching, 
when you're categorizing information that you find. So eventually you'll be finding articles. You may be using an information management system like Zotero or Mendeley, it's a citation manager. You can add your own tags in both those systems and add your own terms, and that's really helpful. So there might not be a good term for what you're coming up with, what you're researching. You can create your own and you can use it to full effect in something like Mendeley or Zotero. And also it will assist you as you're doing your analysis and your write-up as well. How do you create a controlled vocabulary? Well, you have to think about initial keywords like we've already mentioned. And then maybe start even before you do any really heavy duty research by just cruising around in some subject specific databases, doing some very high level or I guess we could say very broad searches to see what you find and what other researchers are coming up with. And then start by noting those terms down that you find through general searches. So you might want to create a research logbook to record what you're doing. It doesn't have to be anything really complicated. You could just use a, a Word document or even some pieces of paper if you want. It can be as simple or complicated as you want. Let's go to one of our research databases and I'll show you what I mean by looking for some specific terminology. 